Okay, it's 5.31, and I'd like to call the regular meeting of the WASA Board of Education to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to do a few things out of order on the agenda due to the fact that some of our guests are not here yet. Uh, we're going to go first to agenda item seven, approving the consent agenda. And I'm seeking a motion to approve the consent agenda. Oh, it's, oh, I'm sorry, it's seven on mine, but we had a revision. Okay, I'm sorry, consent, uh, agenda item number eight. Seeking a motion to approve the consent agenda, please. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? I abstain. Okay, motion carries. We're next going to agenda item nine, old and recurring business. So the first item is a legal expense summary. No action requested by the board, just the summary. Correct. Oh, okay. Anything you want to add to that? Oh. No. Okay. Oh, okay. Then we'll go on to item number two. And this, this, this is 2019-2020 budget reconciliation. Bob Test, Chief Finance and Business Services Officer, presented a budget reconciliation plan aligned with district shared key interests that will be applied in building the 2019-2020 budget. So I'm seeking a motion for approval of the 2019-2020 budget reconciliation plan as presented. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Abstain? I abstain. Motion carries. All right, we will move on to agenda item 10, new business. So the first item is um, regarding the Education Operations Committee of the Whole. Six months ago, on October 22nd, 2018, the board approved a tax levy for the 2018-2019 fiscal year that included approximately $6.5 million applied to previously issued callable debt in a strategy known as debt defeasance. This strategy reduces approximately $580,000 in interest costs while offering greater flexibility in future debt management. The second and final step in this process is to formally approve the establishment of an escrow account for the purposes of defeasance of certain general obligation bonds and transfer of funds into this account. Administration requests that this formal action take place at the May 13th Board of Education meeting. So I am seeking a motion to authorize the establishment of an escrow account for the purpose of defeasance of certain general obligation bonds as presented. And this will be a roll call vote. So moved. Second. <coughs> okay, James Boucher? Yes. Beth Martin? Yes. Pat McKee? Yes. Teresa Miles? Yes. Jane Roosh? Yes. Lance Trollo? Yes. Lee Webster? Yes. Trisha Zunker? Yes. Second is the resolution authorizing the redemption of the general obligation refunding bonds, series, 2000, series 2009, dated September 29th, 2009. Along with the above action, or the aforementioned action, the board must separately take action to redeem certain outstanding bonds as part of the presented defeasance strategy. So I am seeking a motion to authorize the redemption of outstanding bonds as presented. This will also be a roll call vote. So moved. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Roll call. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yep. No, mm -hmm. that, I was still writing Mr. Trout. Yep. Uh, James Boucher? Yes. 
Beth Martin? Yes. Pat McKee? Yes. Drew Smiles? Yes. Jane Roosh? Yes. Lance Trowell? Yes. Lee Webster? Yes. Trisha Zunker? Yes. All right, third item, designation of bank signatory. In order to efficiently conduct banking business on behalf of the Board of Education, it is necessary to declare signatory for bank accounts held in the district's name. By offering a letter to each bank with such declaration, the Chief Finance and Business Services Officer, Supervisor of Financial Services, and the General Ledger Specialist will be given authority to transact business in accordance with all district policies and procedures. I'm seeking a motion to authorize district business department personnel, including the Chief Finance and Business Services Officer, to be signatory on behalf of the Wausau School District to execute banking business in accordance with all district policies. So moved. Second. I, I do have one question I forgot to ask last time, Bob. Is there a, like a check limit authority in some other policy that says, you know what, if it's over X dollar amount, it has to have two signatures? They all have to have two signatures to begin with. Okay. So they all have to have two signatures. We write some pretty big checks. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's the <coughs> I really don't. We, we write some big checks to our uh, third party administrator for health insurance. We write some big checks to our busing company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a question that. for the auditor. Um, <coughs> I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, Chuck Krieger? Yeah, Chuck Krieger. Oh. It, it'd be interesting to get his perspective, like you know, to other districts, if it's over a certain dollar amount, yeah. does it have to go to a. It's, it, it's a typical control, or yeah. usually over a certain dollar amount, but yeah. maybe, maybe not in this environment. I don't know. Yeah, we have some other measures in place with positive pay, and we get uh, uh, checks that bounce back to us if the date doesn't match exactly what we said, sure. or if the dollar amount doesn't match. We've got some other uh, uh, protections in place, but the one you mentioned, I'm unsure of. Even if Noel was here, he may be able to answer that, but I'm going to send an email, and I'll have it for you in the next Perfect. Meeting, maybe, or the next meeting. Yeah, that's great. Like Thank that. you. Mm -hmm. That was it. Okay, so we have a first and a, and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay, that uh, takes us through approval, approval of the consent agenda, old and recurring business, and new business. And for those of you still um, are, are just walking in, we're doing our agenda slightly out of order because we were very efficient at our earlier meeting and um, some of our guests are still not here. Mm -hmm. So. I could speak see. a little bit to the, uh, if you'd like me to make some comments about the, the insurance, uh, the health insurance process. Would that be all sure. right to do? All Absolutely. right. Um, so first, a, a little personal anecdote. I walked through the information that was shared on our website um, with my wife. Um, and, and if you haven't had a chance, just to, to know the level of support that's been offered to our employees, if you have a few minutes, just take a look. There is, there is a YouTube recording of the presentation. There's the whole uh, PowerPoint presentation. There's, a, there's an FAQ section. There, it's really, really well laid out. And, um, and then, so on top of that, you know, uh, that support, obviously they have all of the the, the, the presentations, the face-to-face, -face, two a day, every evening for the last how many nights, two Tammy? And <laughs> two and a half weeks. Yeah. Um, and matter of fact, Tammy just shared with me that currently we have had 661 uh, people attend those meetings. There's two meetings tonight and two meetings tomorrow, and then the deadline is the 15th to select, correct? I selected, so we're really, <laughs> so you don't have to chase me down. Um, so I just want to uh, just commend uh, Tammy and Carla and Bob and Noel. Um, who else has been working on that? District employees, that's the bulk of it. Like yeah, yeah. Some other service providers that work with us. Certainly like M3, M3 and, and, and Aspirus Arise. Aspirus Arise. The, the feedback from those meetings, um, there's always a district person there. But M3 and Aspirus have been kind of you know, leading those those uh, informational meetings. Um, but I just want to thank you know you four in particular, uh, um, you know for the the all the work, all the 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 organization, the, all the time um, that you've put into it. It's uh, and, and again we're getting very 
positive anecdotal feedback from our staff about those those meetings and the support they're receiving. So now we just have to have them finish choosing their plan. Their plan. I think, what did you say here? 630 um, so far have selected out of how many are we hoping for total? Bob, exactly at 60 percent. Okay, so 40 yeah. percent so left. All right, to select in the next two days. In the next two days. So, if you're listening, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you're an employee on a health plan. Yeah, there's no default selection. You know, right. just default to what you had. Right. Because these three plans are different than everything we've had almost. Right. So we can't offer a default selection and force people away from Marshfield Clinic. Or force them onto a hiding out the right. when they don't want to be. Right. So we're asking for an affirmative selection yep. for everybody on the plan. Yeah, and the selection <coughs> process is they're going to be very busy. Yeah, selection process is four questions on that Google Doc. I think very simple. So really nicely done. Thank you for all your work on that. So, yeah. I just wanted to add that that was one of our main concerns that the education mm -hmm. component component be robust, and it looks like it is. Yeah. So good work. Bob, if somebody doesn't select, then what? Good question. Good question. Uh, I, I we'll said I'm going to go to their house we'll, and track we'll them call down. Them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, one thing that we, we don't want to do, and we say it publicly, people might choose not to submit, but if someone has insurance right now and we take it away by virtue of saying you didn't submit, that's a disaster for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's going to have to be avoided. Mm -hmm. Now, with me saying that in public session on TV, they might say, wow, I just heard on TV, you don't have to submit. So there's danger in that. We are literally going to be calling everybody. We're going to be working with the principals to reach out to the people working in the buildings because they have a maybe a quicker connection, too. But we're going to do everything we can over the next two days mm -hmm. uh, to get 100%. Mm -hmm. And we have had some people selecting that they are no longer going to be on our plan. They've actively selected that. Mm -hmm. And we're even going to follow up with them. Is this really what you meant? Because mm -hmm. right? you selected by virtue of a Google form, you clicked on, mm -hmm. did you understand the question? Right? Because right. July 1, you won't have coverage anymore. Right. So there's some things like that. Right. That was actually going to be one of my questions, is that's aligning more towards conventional plans right now. I was curious as to what that percentage of opt-outs was going to, 40% would be extreme, but um, yeah, uh, it's not surprising that you're going to see yeah. some migrate away. Yeah, we're, we're getting a few of them out. I was kind of surprised by it, but mm -hmm. I guess I shouldn't be. It's getting more conventional. Yeah. And then they have another opportunity in November for their mm -hmm. January 1 election. And January 1, you might remember also that the, the premiums stay the same. We're setting the premiums as of July 1, but deductibles are going to, going to go up and co-insurance is going to be introduced. <coughs> so that even brings it more into uh, alignment with most other or many other employers. More in alignment, not completely in alignment. Mm -hmm. It's still a very, very favorable plan, but you might see a few more opt out. January 1. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I may say something <clears throat> going through that many times, uh, I, mm -hmm. I'd like to uh, agree with you on mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And uh, great work to give the choices, mm -hmm. to have the choices for the professionals mm -hmm. and, and staff. Uh, it's well done. It's a lot of work behind that scene, I know. It was interesting. We had some staff reach out and, and actually. Uh, advocate for less choice to keep the prices, keep the costs lower. Well, that's not the interest of the committee <laughs> at this time. So, yeah, but they under it shows they understand. You know, kind of the dynamics. That was that was good. So. Okay, um, thank you. So uh, we jumped to superintendent commentary. Oh, the, I jumped right there. over you. No, no that's, that's okay. That's, yeah. that's fine. We're, we're I've got another. Discussion point. If we've got some time to kill, yeah. it's on the agenda we, actually, which is always favorable. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was thinking we might wrap up those, but go ahead. So oh, we'll get those. Uh, it was the defeasance, the strategy. Oh, mm -hmm. And you know, some people are just tuning in, or maybe haven't been on the board even. And I've had some short conversations with you. This is a strategy we've been doing now for two years. And think about the strategic plan that we're in the midst of. 
And we didn't know it at the time, but before we even started strategic planning, we knew that it would be better to have more options regarding financing and referendum in particular than fewer options. And two years ago, we essentially had one option to go to referendum for capital expenses or bond. We talked about the 2022 opportunity. And we talked about it back in 2015, the 2022 opportunity, when a lot of our debt falls off, and only then can we go to referendum. And gradually, we started tackling some of this future debt, piling it up. And again, this action you took earlier tonight, tackling future debt, piling it up. So we created for ourselves an additional opportunity that could come as early as next fall, but more than likely uh, fall of 2020, mm -hmm. right? Could be April of 20. So your action and that strategy is certainly part of the strategic mm -hmm. plan. Even though we didn't talk about whole loss, uh, whole mm -hmm. child at the time, we weren't talking about the five strands, one of which being optimization resources, but it certainly aligns with much of, we can, much of what we can do in the strategic plan. And that's credit to you, and maybe a little bit me for having the foresight, but you're the one that put it in place mm -hmm. and voted on it and gave us this opportunity. A lot so, of credit to you. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you for doing that, and you mm -hmm. made much of what we're going to do in the strategic plan possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bob. Looks like we're having some more guests, yep. potentially. <laughs> yeah, this is our uh, fine arts, the, our, our focus on education. Okay. So they're just setting up, I see, and I see our uh, commendation folks are here, and I don't know for sure. Hey, Chris, Carol Carlson, Michelle Murtis, are they here? They are not here yet. Okay. No, but right. they are coming. So we've got, I see Sarah back there, and I see... Yes, mm -hmm. she's here and okay. Sarah's here. So we, could do so we can go to resolution of commendation. Yeah, we could do that. And then we have, where's, where's Marie? Okay. Oh, she's set, she's she's okay. Okay. That's That's it sounds yes. like they're still setting up, so they can okay. a little more time for the education. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, finish up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking that just for. Um, precision purposes. Right. Okay, board members, I, I'm going to finish off the open forum since we already started that with mm -hmm. Dr. Health's six, uh, um, superintendent commentary. This is agenda item it's 11 on my probably 12 mm -hmm. now. Um, and then we'll go to the beginning of the agenda, and by that time, presumably, all of our guests will be mm -hmm. here. Okay, so, um, so we're on item A in open forum. And this is board member professional growth and development report. Do any board members have anything to report as it relates to professional growth and development? I just, I, I attended a forum where they talked about broadband out in the rural areas. And I think that really relates to us. And there's some hope. I mean, we have a nice group of people that are working on it. And they explained all the difficulties that come with being out in the country and how difficult it is for students to get their work done. They talk about driving in, to the end of the road so they can hmm. get linked mm -hmm. up. Um, mm -hmm. And it's something we need to continue to think about and maybe join with the county to make this happen. Um, I have one thing to report. Uh, on April 27th, I presented at the Wisconsin Indian Education Association annual conference. My topic was an underrepresentation of Native Americans in the legal field and the role of empowering and encouraging Native youth. Um, I talked about this briefly at our last regular meeting because the presentation was upcoming. Now I have um, actually done it. If anybody's interested, I'm happy to send my presentation to you. I actually met one of Dr. Hiltz's um, former colleagues, the superintendent of uh, Bayfield mm -hmm. School District. It was a very well received presentation, so I won't I won't go through it all with you. But if anybody is interested, I'm happy to send that on. Okay, and then we're going to move to um, item C in open forum. Now, I actually have a little bit of commentary. This is presiding officer commentary, and uh, I think it will get us to the six o'clock mark. 
And it's simply because of the timing. I don't anticipate, you know, going forward that much commentary, but it's, it's just the timing, the, the year, and a couple of proposed changes and um, things I'd like to actually get your thoughts on. So um, the first thing I just want to actually address the board member liaison report um, before getting into the additional commentary and ask that this be entered into the official record. Does anybody want to share anything from their reported board liaison? Anything maybe that stood out that would be of interest? You know, I went to the um, art show at Wasa West on May 1st, and also it was Project Lead the Way, and it was their final presentation. Pat, remember when we were there in December? And I can't remember all of the projects, but one group of gentlemen were going to design a shield for cars that have to stay out in the winter that don't have a garage and to keep the ice off. So I saw their final project, it was great, and they got it to work. And they said one of the reasons is we had a lot of cold weather, so they had a lot of time to, to practice. And then there were two boys that were working on a special, I'm not an ice fisher, fisherman, but they wanted to design a hook that was easier for older people to thread and not lose, and with cold fingers. So they came up with a prototype that you can go ice fishing and um, thread your, your hook without losing it. So it was really neat to see their end products and, and uh, then the art show was great but, uh, and well attended, but it was fun to see those kids taking their projects to the end. So that was nice. Bless you. Thanks, Teresa. Anybody else have anything to share? Well, I, I attended the last EGL mm -hmm. showcase. It was kind of sad, mm -hmm. but I have to tell you that the presentations I went to, they were fantastic. There was not an um or an er in the whole presentation. It went smooth and they had really fantastic ideas. Thanks, Jane. One thing I want to highlight is um, I've seen a number of you at various functions. May is a very busy month. Um, but one thing that I wanted to highlight from the board report here is uh, the Horace Mann Greek Day. I don't know if anybody's attended that, the sixth grade. They do this Greek Day. It, it's amazing. You, they gave me $100 um, to spend there, and there's food, games, um, services. Uh, it was great. I mean, I had my fortune told, my palm read. I played some <laughs> games and felt terribly about myself afterwards because I was, didn't do very well with those, but um, and enjoyed some grapes. So if you haven't attended that in the past, um, I asked uh, Deb Waller, who I know is um, instrumental in that, to kind of keep us posted next mm -hmm. year when it is again, but it was just really amazing. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I went to the Riverview Variety Show, and we really have to commend uh, Tricia. She kind of coordinated the thing, and the talent in those elementary school students was absolutely amazing. There was one drummer there that I think could have performed anywhere, mm -hmm. and it was just an awesome experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lee. I appreciate that. That's my one allotted volunteer opportunity. <laughs> if we had a more lenient policy, I'd certainly be volunteering more, though, and in other schools. Thank you for that. Okay, so I want to enter that report into the record, but I do have a little bit of um, commentary. Um, first of all, we had the 25-year club uh, and retirement banquet last week. A huge thank you to Amy Erlin um, for her hard work. I mean, to pull that off flawlessly like she does takes immense skill, and so it was amazing. Uh, 24 teachers were inducted into the 25-year club, or 24 um, staff were inducted to the 25-year club. Um, and then there were 42 retirees that were recognized, um, 22 without 25 years of service, or rather I should say 25 years or less of service, and then 20 retirees with 25 years or more service. So that was amazing. And um, we also inducted Will Sue, graduate uh, class of 1994 of Wasa East, as the Hall of Fame recipient this year. So that was really wonderful. Um, I also want to congratulate our um, graduates on behalf of the Board of Education. Uh, we have some rough numbers. They, they might change before the end of the month, but right now we have uh, 10 graduates at EEA, 10 graduates at EGL, 68 graduates at the Alternative High School, 17 graduates at WAVE, 260 at Wasa East, and 322 at Wasa West. Have I forgotten anything, Tom? Okay. So congratulations to each of them. Um, with the 
what with a strong educational foundation provided by Wasa School District, certainly each and every one of them are off to a very positive start in their pursuit. Um, I was going to wish the staff a, a happy summer and thank them for their year, but with all the snow days, uh, we, the, it'll, it'll be the last day of school on our new regular board meeting, so I'll save it for then. Right. Um, and then one very final thing, and this is something I'm seeking board um, input on, and I'm sorry, Keith, I talked to mm -hmm. Cassie about this to see if it was viable, and, and so I'm just going to sure. introduce it right now. Um, one thing I would I would really like to do, and I'm, I'm curious of everybody's position, but I would like to have a personalized card from the board. I know that um, gifts went out during teacher appreciation, but we meet next week. We can sign a card thanking them, t thanking the staff for the their service through the year, and wishing them a great summer. Maybe they'll be wh whatever they're doing. I mean, but just to acknowledge very personally. Or we, you know, with our own signatures, our own words. And I talked to Cassie to see if it would be possible to have um, this placed in the staff lounge with maybe some cookies and bananas and have the card near it and just make it a more of a personal um, thank you at the end of the year. Are you talking about like one for each school? Yes, one for okay. each school. So in the staff lounge at each and every school. So the numbers will vary. Mm -hmm. But. Um, it would just be a nice way towards the end of the year. I'm thinking like the week before school is over, somewhere in there. And it, if if there's support for this, I think it would be great to have board members do deliveries that could. And um, just to go in the school and say thank you, I think it makes a big difference just to have that kind of personal touch. It could be good. I think when we meet, we meet again, what, next week? Next week, so, we so can, you can bring your you signing sign, hand. and sign next week. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea. Perfect. Okay. And for those people who are retired or semi-retired, we could help with delivering them. Right. And I'll, I'll have, I, I, I sort of mentioned, I thought there might be some people that might be willing to help too. I thought so you were going to suggest you. help signing them. <laughs> Pat, we just want your signature legible. All right. Okay. Okay. Wait a minute. So, I'm going to be here so a while. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Well, well, thank you everybody for that. I, um, I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. Okay, with that, that concludes the presiding commentary. And like I said, it's mostly just timing um, for the extended commentary. Mm -hmm. Okay, with that, I think we can go back to agenda item two. We'll start the meeting. Okay, so now we are back to agenda item two, and um, this movie, or this movie, this meeting is getting more and more full. So, just for purposes of clarity, um, Vice President McKee ran a very efficient meeting, and we were done at 5:30. As we were agendized to start the regular board meeting at 6 p.m. or immediately following the PRL meeting, we did the latter. Mm -hmm. So, um, we've actually finished a large part of this regular board meeting agenda, and it will probably be a very short meeting for those of you that have just arrived. Um, so back to agenda item two and resolutions of commendation. Um, there are two individuals being recognized for resolutions of commendation. They are Sarah Goldberg and Elizabeth Schumann. Mm -hmm. The resolution of commendation committee recommends the following individuals for recognition. Sarah Goldberg. Sarah Goldberg is a bilingual first grade teacher at Thomas Jefferson Elementary School and was nominated for the resolution of commendation by Jefferson Elementary Principal Mr. Brent Johnson. Sarah was named a 2019 Cole Fellow from the Herb Cole Educational Foundation. Fellowship recipients are chosen for their superior ability to inspire a love of learning in their students, their ability to motivate others, and their leadership and service within and outside the classroom. Mr. Johnson states, Sarah Goldberg is an amazing educator who lights up the room with her infectious passion for education. She makes a difference every day in the lives of her students and goes above and beyond to help them achieve. We are so proud of Mrs. Goldberg for winning the Herb Cole Teacher Fellowship. She is a tremendous asset to the Wasa School District. And Sarah is here. I saw Sarah come in. There's Sarah. Um, Uh, 
Um, the second is Elizabeth Schumann. Elizabeth Schumann is a senior at Wassa East High School and was nominated for the resolution of commendation by East High Principal Dr. Brad Peck. Elizabeth was named a 2019 Cole Excellent Scholar through the Herb Cole Educational Foundation. Excellent scholarship recipients have demonstrated excellence in the academic arena and high motivation to achieve, have displayed a broad range of activity and leadership outside the academic setting, and have shown strong promise for succeeding in college and beyond. Dr. Peck states, as a student, Elizabeth Schumann has demonstrated superior academic ability and achievement by maintaining a 4.0 grade point average. Elizabeth has definitely made her academic studies her top priority. She is also a full IB student. Personally, Elizabeth's character is impeccable. She is a positive role model for other students in our school, and I am, I am impressed with the excellent citizenship skills that she exhibits on a daily basis. Therefore, because of her academic ability, acceptance of multiple responsibilities, and exceptional leadership skills, Elizabeth Schumann is well-deserving of, and will be an outstanding ambassador of, the Wassa School District's Board Commendation Award. Elizabeth Schumann. Mm -hmm. point of order here before we move to uh, presenting. We, I actually need to seek a motion to award resolutions of commendation to Sarah Goldberg and Elizabeth Schumann. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Present out here? Yeah. yeah. Um, we do it together. Okay. Yeah. So if, if Sarah and you want to come up front here? Yeah. Let's go right up front here so we can get a good photo opportunity. <laughs> this one is, uh, there it is. This is for Sarah. All right. So um, maybe we could. How do you want to do it? Should we do an individual and then? Yeah. All right. So how about? Um, why don't you come over here and? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. While we're taking photos, um, you can just—I'll just talk through it. But, uh, <laughs> I, had the, I had the opportunity to, to attend the the, uh, the Cole Fellowship uh, Award Ceremony, um, and I'll just tell you, charming Mrs. Goldberg, uh, <laughs> what, had a wonderful conversation, and Elizabeth, and you and your parents, right? And um, and Elizabeth's mother was also. A Cole Fellowship winner back in, and you're here, right? There you are, yeah. So just in just wonderful connection, strong, you know, wonderful teachers, wonderful families, wonderful students. So. Thank you. So Sorry, much. did you get what you needed? Uh, yeah. All right, <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks for coming. Same right here. Sure. Mm -hmm. So if you want. To Hang on to that. And I'll do one more. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes. Thanks for all you do. Congratulations. Congratulations. Professional Learning Academy, Academy Graduation Recognition. Mm -hmm. The board will recognize the following individuals for completing personalized learning academies. The first is Karen Carlson from Grant Elementary. She's completed classroom management and climate, highly qualified teacher, professional learning community, teacher leader, <coughs> and professional learning facilitator, teacher leader. The next is Michelle Murtis, Grant Elementary. She has completed Classroom Management and Climate, Highly Qualified Teacher, Professional Learning Community, Teacher Leader, and Professional Learning Facilitator, Teacher Leader. Okay. 
Yeah, you should just stay up front. Come on up here. No more awards, right? We can sit down. Yeah. <laughs> over the desk. Yeah. Well, um, teachers and students, you could come over and get lined up back here. Good evening. My name is Marie Northup, and I'm. Um, we are going to be presenting our spotlight on education tonight, on visual arts education. Mm -hmm. And um, we have some student work displayed around the room, and the students are going to tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment. But what I really wanted to do is take this opportunity to give you an overview mm -hmm. of visual arts education and what that looks like in the 21st century. So, Cassie, if you would... There. In 2014, um, just to give you a little background, in 2014 the National Core Arts Standards were developed by um, people from um, each state agency, like DPI for Wisconsin, but all 50 states were involved in that. And um, they developed um, core arts standards in the area of visual arts, music, theater arts, and dance. In 2016, Wisconsin state music standards were updated to reflect those national core art standards. And this year, DPI is working to update the art and design standards. And so that's just a little bit of background. And um, in each area of the arts, visual arts, music, dance, and theater, there are four artistic processes. And the first one is create, investigate, plan, make, reflect, refine, and then continue to repeat those things until you get to that finished product. The next one is to present, um, which can, in, in art, in the visual arts, it would be presenting artwork, and uh, for music uh, students, it would be doing a concert. But select, analyze, interpret, share, um, responding to other artwork, um, how you perceive it, interpret it, analyze, those are all things our students are being asked to do. And finally, take that information and connect it um, and relate it to culture, to society, um, and, and bringing that all together. How, do, how does this piece of artwork connect to the world around us? Um, this is simply a um, word picture of words that came up in that came from the standards and also from um, what artists think about when they think about creating and as you can see the word create refine think synthesize <coughs> revise reflect um, interpret all of those things pop up the more a word pops up the bigger it gets and so when I look at at something like this I say okay those are some really big takeaways now, um, moving on, the four C's in education are creating, collaborating, critical thinking, and communicating. And you, you've probably heard John speak to those um, in the past. And finally, how does that line up with Bloom's taxonomy? Well, creating is at the very top of that pyramid, evaluating and analyzing. So when you look at the visual arts, you can see that we're already way, we're moving up that pyramid a lot faster. I mean, they're not just merely memorizing things. Um, there are some things, that, of course, at the very basic level, they got to learn their cool colors from their warm colors and, and things like that. But as you can see, and as the students will um, talk about and their teachers, um, art 
requires you to be engaged at, the, at those higher levels of critical thinking. And so um, what do the arts, the four C's, um, and college and career readiness, what are employers looking for? I happen to chair the committee for music at DPI. I was one of the co-chairs when they wrote the music standards. And again, this came up not only in the strand of music, it came up in science and technology, but employers want people who can create, who can think outside the box, who can collaborate and communicate effectively. And the arts is a demonstration of that. And so that's what that's why we want to have the spotlight on the arts tonight. In 2016, we had a fine arts leadership team define what our mission was across all arts areas. And it was to engage learners in creating, performing, responding, and connecting through the arts. In your board book presentation, you will find after that our guiding principles. And I'm not going to I'm not going to take the time now to read all those to you, but they're certainly there for you to look at. Um, but if we can skip ahead, Cassie, you can skip through those. And then I just wanted to highlight, whoop, can you go back one? Sorry. I just wanted to um, elaborate a little bit on our community collaboration and partnerships. We have a, a, a fantastic relationship with the Woodson Museum. Wausau East IB students work, um, and I'll let Joel speak more to that, but work with um, the Woodson Museum. All district third graders uh, go through the Woodson Museum each year for a educational tour with activities and, and docents. Um, and the Woodson Museum has provided professional development opportunities for our teachers, and they often treat our teachers to lunch when that's a full day thing. So they're just really a great um, partner. Same thing with the Center for Visual Arts. Um, if you remember, if you were here years past, we used to have artwork displayed throughout Longfellow, throughout the Longfellow building. And that was, it was great. Uh, it decorated the walls here wonderfully, but it, did, it limited access. So parents, families, grandparents, it was, it was just a hard place to get into to view the artwork. And so we started working with the Center for Visual Arts and now um, each year for the last four years, we um, occupy the loft gallery with student artwork, K through 12. And it is open, it, uh, the students' artwork is on display. And so I think that that's really um, an amazing thing that they offer, they also do um, day of art with our art educators. Um, they've done that a number of times with us. And finally, Marathon County Public Library. Um, this is in conjunction, Tammy Steckbauer organizes the art cluster with the help of the art teachers and then um, their work that's done in January is put on display at the Marathon um, County Public Library for a month. So we really appreciate those partnerships as well. At this point, though, I really want to turn it over to a student from East. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Hi, um, my name is Eliza Morgan. I'm a senior at Wasi East. Um, and so I, next year, I plan to go into art and math education. Um, I hope to be a teacher. I took, I've taken drawing and painting classes at Wasi East along with IB Art, which was it, it called me to a really high standard it's in art making and and I feel very like it was a very educational experience and not only did it help me with just making art which I love to do I have my piece um, is the boy holding a butterfly um, I also have two drawings over here um, and so when making art, there's three things that really stick out to me. It's that it helps me to think outside the box. It helps me to communicate my <coughs> ideas and, and have a control in my life. Um, with thinking outside the box, I see a connection, not only just art and how it's, you have to um, respond to the different medias, but also that it correlates Oddly enough to math, when you think of a proof, you start with a given and you have to make it to what you're trying to prove 
and whether it was in geometry or algebra two where we were using trigonometric proofs, the steps are different. So being forced to think of things in different ways shows that there's not only one way to get to a desired result, um, but that when you keep working at it, um, even if it's not exactly what the teacher explained, but you got to the right answer, that's, that's really what matters. Um, and so, oddly enough, that's how I view art and um, making sculpture also is, it really shows how that correlates because you don't always know what to expect from the medium you're working with. Um, with Ivy art especially, but all art classes now at East, we're expected to write in a visual journal and then later do exhibition text on each piece. So that shows how to communicate your idea as well. We um, are asked to work within a certain theme for our year of work, which sometimes can, can hold you back, but you our art teachers never want that. and so. Given, so they give us an allotted amount of time where we are supposed to stick at it and bounce ideas around and think deeply into what we're trying to um, show. Um, and then if it doesn't work, we're allowed to work outside of that. But um, it, it helps you to analyze even deeper the concepts you're trying to show. Um, so not only is that you want to show visually through your art um, and your pieces, but also the written language that we walk through, what our intentions were. And then finally, it gives an element of control. Um, specifically and personally in my life, I, I can control how my artwork turns out, even if I can't control how a test is graded in another subject. I can't control how my the people around me are responding. I can control how my artwork looks, and I have great pride in it. It shows me how to be <coughs> all I can be. I get to show my family and my friends and to see their smiles as I tell their stories. This is a cousin, that is a friend, and my sister is underneath. I get to connect, connect with people through my art. Um, so again, just it helps me think outside the box, communicate my ideas, and it gives me control in my life. Oh, well, maybe not. Hi, I'm Marla Kaler, and first of all, that's a lot to live up to. <laughs> so, sorry if I disappoint you guys, but the uh, three topics that I'm going to be discussing today are working through failure, setting goals, and de developing multiple solutions. So through my whole art career, I've mostly done paintings and drawings, but this year I took up ceramics. And so that was really difficult to me because you spend most of your time like honing your skills in like one subject. But then you take your time to dive into something new to spread out your abilities and like try something new in different mediums, which is kind of scary, but it's what school's all about. You have to like try something new. Mm -hmm. And so as you can see, a pot over there, I made that. Mm. It's not perfect, but it was something new that I tried and I'm proud of that. And I would like to be able to show everyone that that's something that you really need to do in life. You really need to try something new. And even if it's not perfect, that's something you need to be proud of. And so I think working through failure is definitely something that you can be proud of, even if you fail. That's something that you tried. And it's just something that's very important through education because you have to keep trying to get something through mathematics, through English. Whatever you're bad at, you still need to be able to like have confidence in yourself that you will be able to do this, even if you have to try and try again. Because practice makes perfect, and that's the most important part. And so another thing too is setting goals because like um, art is not the only thing that goes through someone's day. You have math homework, you have an English paper you need to write. And besides that, that's just school. And some people take on many other things like sports or being in a play. And you have to like find time to set goals to make sure you manage all of those things together. Because just because you have math homework doesn't mean you have to spend all your time doing that. You need to make sure you finish that and everything else you have on your plate. 
And besides that, even with your art, you need to set goals on when you need to finish it or how well you need it done. And so that's something that I think is important too because I've spent time just making small pieces or bigger pieces, but I need to set goals for myself and make sure that I can like put my standards higher than I think I can. Which in my last project I did, unfortunately it can't be here because I was able to set goals and make sure I managed myself very well, that it was able to get into a, a spirus. So that was something that I was proud of myself for. And so setting goals really helped show me that I was able to do something great like that. And so that also goes along with developing multiple solutions because you have this problem, you don't know what to do with it. Like you are asked these guidelines of a specific project. It's just like solving a math problem. There are certain ways you can get to the same answer but some people do it differently, just like learning. Like, there's different types of learning, visual learning, like one-on-one -on -one teaching. It's just whatever works for that person. So you have to like use these skills that you have like learned throughout these years to be able to develop these solutions. Because with that pot project, we were given the idea that we need to make something with very like a lot of detail, but it has to be 12 inches. So a lot of people made different things, like they made sculptures, they made animals all types of things, and that's just what I turned out to bring, because nature is something that's very important to me. So I like being able to bring things that I like and that are very important to me. Like those two portraits are of people who do music, and that's something that's also very important to me. So it gives me the ability to bring multiple things into the art world that aren't just art. And also something important, because I heard uh, on the slideshow before, the art cluster. That was the start of my art career that in third grade back in Maine Elementary is when I was selecting for that program and that was my start my art career in art education. So art education is very important for everyone's start too. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is um my name is Marcus Lee. I'm a Wasa West senior. Um, I'm in AP Studio Art this year and then um, so I'll be talking about communication uh, through art and how it builds your confidence. So I'm going to start with a story. Unfortunately, it's going to be kind of sad. <laughs> but um, back in September, beginning of the school year, I attempted to commit suicide. Um, ever since then, it's kind of been rough. Like, all my confidence was crushed. I didn't want to do anything in my life. But um, doing art ever since it, like, I've, I've always been around it, but just especially this year, being able to just do all this art and then talk to people about it, it just has rose my confidence so much to the point where um, I'm just, I'm okay to talk in front of a board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back then I would never even like think of the possibility of talking in front of everyone. Um, but communication is such a important uh, skill to have, especially for people that are growing up into the workforce. Like, even if it's not the workforce, school, you have a group project, you have to somehow work together with your team, make sure you get the things done. And then during the workforce, like, you have to be able to communicate with other team members so then you get, like, projects done or whatever. And then, cabinets is, it's just so important. I'm not saying as in cockiness, but then, building up your confidence, it's something you can't, not everyone can do. And then future work, um, employers, excuse me, they look for someone who's confident, like would you rather hire someone that maybe can do the job or someone that could, you know, they get the job done in two weeks, tops. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, I'm Olivia Majernik. I'm also a senior at Wausau West High School, and um, this year I was in AP Studio Art. Um, one part of AP was that we had to choose a concentration and something to focus on throughout the whole year. So I actually chose to work on pl uh, plastic pollution in the ocean. So as you can see, some of my pieces are up here. And a big part of that for me was doing a lot of research. So like 
I learned about like the straws that how and how dangerous they are to turtles and plastic bags are super super bad for turtles because I think that they're jellyfish and I it, it was a sad topic but it really was very enjoyable for me to spend time I mean I watched hours and hours of YouTube videos about like lionfish and sea turtles and seahorse and the hermit crab in the plastic bottle that's it, it's, it was really interesting to me to learn about this and to be able to take my side of it and bring awareness to the plastic pollution and like to be able to use my art to show people. You know, we had an art show um, at Wasa West a couple like days ago and it was really impactful for me to be able to show people, you know, I had little kids coming up and they're looking and they're all excited, oh there's a sea turtle and then they notice like the plastic and then you get to have a conversation with people. It was all about connecting and it was just a lot of fun to do the research and yeah. we also have like, uh, there was a, we had a fellow student who did um, like, sorry. <laughs> We had a fellow student who did uh, fairy tales mm -hmm. and then connected them to modern cultures and different cultures. So she was able to do a lot of research with like African culture and Indian cultures. I know she spent a lot of time, she did Rapunzel as an uh, Indian girl riding an elephant. So she had to study the patterns in like the blanket on the elephant. And I, I know she did a ton of work looking at other cultures and it was just, it's really enjoyable for everybody to put their time and effort looking at different things to bring into our artwork. All right, I won't keep too much of your time because they did such a great job of talking a little bit about their work and what they've learned this year. And I know I enjoy talking with them every single day um, about their artwork and what they've learned and how they're exploring that. And um, So I hope you did too and also some of their work around the room. Um, oh, sorry. Yes, I'm Maria DeVere. I teach at Wasa West. Um, I have the joy of working with the last three students that just presented and two of which are AP pilot students this year. And um, as they've been exploring, like they talked about some of their ideas. Um, one thing I do want to draw your attention to was the sheets that were handed out. And um, they all look different because those are all original artworks um, by some of our students this year. Um, and the quotes on these were quotes said by students, um, or written down by students within the last couple weeks. And um, as I was going through some of them, I was just blown away by the impactful comments that were made by students and how artists truly changed their life and changed how they do things and how they communicate. And, um, I would just encourage you, if you have um, a chance, to read through some of these because um, it really calls out the difference that um, they've been able to make through their art and also how they've been able to impact others. Um, so again, thanks for your time. Mm -hmm. Good evening, I'm Joel Patacone, I'm the, one of the art teachers over at Wausau East, and um, I first I want to thank Marie for uh, encouraging us to come tonight to present and thank the board and everyone who's here for taking the time to listen. Um, I think oftentimes I think people come and they see the artwork and it immediately it draws them in, but I, I don't think they realize until you hear how eloquently and articulately, the students start to speak about it, all of the process and thinking and learning and researching, collaborating, that goes into making a piece. So it was really, it was really great to hear them speak on that tonight. Um, and it, it's also really interesting to see students who find their voice, uh, like Marcus mentioned, and, and find an avenue to, to kind of communicate and get things out um, so they can, they can heal themselves, I think. Or, uh, as Olivia said, kind of, communicate and, uh, and bring up a topic that's near and dear to their heart. Um, so there's so many things and, and we've put together, um, you know, reasons to take it. Um, most critically, I think now uh, it's about that balance that it brings to some of the students' day and kind of refilling them, allowing them to sort of escape, let the pressures of the day sort of melt away as they get absorbed into doing something they love. But I think Wausau is so lucky. Um, I think we have a a, a support of our community. Uh, there's so many opportunities for us to collaborate uh, right within the neighborhoods that our schools are in. 
Um, it's, it's built in. And uh, one of the things that's kept me here so long and makes me so proud to be part of it is the, the vibrant and rich K-12 program that we've got. I mean, these students can't get to this point without all the work that comes below at all the way from K you know, to ninth grade when we take them in. Um, you know, I, I think there's a video in here that is, is similar to the quotes um, you know, that, that we had had last year. I, I took pictures of the students' displays at CAFE and then had them write a little quote. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll just let you see that uh, and then finish up. Mm -hmm. opportunity to invite you all to cafe the timing of this really presents itself well and our big show is uh, on Wednesday night from five to eight it's free and open to the public family friendly so uh, bring all and anyone who would uh, like to see some art like this uh, hear music uh, eat ethnic foods uh, buy plants from the horticulture students <laughs> see auto uh, an auto show in the tech ed department you name it there's lots going on that night I think the whole tech ed wing is open and they're doing live demos as well um, as wonderful as our, as, our, as our art program is, um, I, I do think we are at a moment, and I just wanted to mention a few challenges um, that, that I see. Um, that, that I think, think right now our, our focus on school report card uh, and test scores is starting to impact you know, uh, the education on what we call the whole child philosophy. And I think Dr. Hiltz has mentioned this in one of his key issues, um, focusing on the whole child, which now is more important than ever. Um, each year, though, 50 to 60 students are back scheduled into taking um, additional English and math classes. And that, that takes away their opportunity as an incoming freshman to take any electives at all. And I find me, myself thinking and wondering, are we really allowing that student to play to their strengths? You know, we're, we're putting them in 
uh, all day in an area where they are not going to have any success in school. They're not having a positive school you know, experience. They're not making connections that they might make in those elective classes. In my years, I, I've seen many students who were not necessarily the best academic students that thrived in our area, and it was the one thing that kept them coming back to school. So I, I, I just want to make motion of that uh, and, and, and call it to your attention. And I know that everything hinges on those test scores, but how we approach it, you know, I think, is, is critical. Um, the other thing I want to mention that I've seen just become really impactful over the past couple of years is the enrollment on un the unbalanced enrollment between the east and west side, um, the east side electives, and what we can offer extracurricular wise are really starting to become impacted. Um, and if we are to maintain a vibrant, rich, equitable program on both sides of the river, we really need to do something and take action to, to make that happen. So um, thank you again, uh, and thank you for letting me bring those challenges up as well for your, t your, your time tonight. Thank you. I have one question. I was just wondering, I noticed that all the art shows, that this, the pictures are not signed. And I was just wondering why that is. Maria, can you speak to that? Yes. Um, so I agree with that. That was a concern of mine as well. Um, so with the new AP program that they are putting in place, they actually don't want signed works because um, unless it fits into the work itself. So you will notice some students are working it into their piece as a way to leave their mark, or some students are finding other ways to um, make their work have a symbol of some sort to sign mm -hmm. that. But for whatever reason with the AP program, they don't want that. Um, and it, I think most of it's because they don't want to identify that work and what school it's from mm -hmm. when they're judging it. They want it to have a fair judge. So there are some students that don't sign it until after um, they are judged, and then they will go back and sign it. Yeah, that's a good question. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Marie, Maria. Joel and others who are not here tonight for your efforts at cultivating this incredible talent. You really made our um, meeting room a lot more beautiful tonight, even if it's for the short term. Also to each of the students that spoke, thank you very much for getting up and sharing your story and your path. Um, it's wonderful that you've been able to find this passion. So thank you very much. I don't have any buttons left in my shirt. The first presenter was my granddaughter. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> okay, um, so we are moving to the special board report. We have the Wassa West and Wassa East um, travel. Are they, are they here? Yes. Yes. Yep. yes. Oh, okay. France and Spain trips. Okay, hello. Um, thank you for having us here tonight. My name is Beth Cowie. I'm a French teacher at Wausau East. And um, I'm here with my colleague, Janelle McCallum, Spanish teacher at Wausau East. And we also have with us some of our students who traveled with our group to um, Paris and Madrid in March over spring break. <coughs> and I'll just take a moment to introduce them. Uh, we have Shay Klein. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, behind me here we have um, Lily Grace Faulkner, Mario Dewey, and Ben Wright. And then we also have a parent representation here tonight. Uh, Dr. Klein was one of our chaperones on the trip. Mm. Wasa East has a strong tradition of student travel. Every year at least one of our teachers is taking students abroad. We travel with our students because we want to bring their classroom lessons to life. I heard multiple times on the trip, we learned this in history class. Mm -hmm. We travel with our students because we want them to experience firsthand the culture of the languages they're studying in their classroom. The art, the music, the food, the history, the traditions, the architecture, and more. We want our students to see how people live in other parts of the world. People living in the United States 
make up a small portion of the population of the planet. Most people in the world don't live like we do. Ask the kids about the bathrooms. <laughs> we want them to practice the language they've been learning in the classroom with native speakers in real life situations. And we travel with our students because we want them to experience the world. Good evening. Um, my name is Lily Grace Faulkner. Um, hola. Um, I'm also a Spanish student. I'm in IB Spanish right now. And I just want to say thank you for um, listening to us. We're so happy to be here. And we cannot wait to um, reminisce on our trip as it was such a great time. Um, so the first picture, that is um, all of us at the famous Palace of Versailles, of course, where um, Louis XIV lived and held his court. And like Sonora McCallum said, we learned about this in history class. Um, I'm an IB student in history, and right before we went on our trip, we had just finished um, our unit on the French Revolution. So we had um, a rich um, amount of information about France and of course Spain and all the other countries that were there. And so um, it was just amazing to have all this background information going into our trip and to know that these buildings just weren't buildings, but is where Napoleon was, or um, one of the Louis, you know. <laughs> um, so in the second picture, uh, that is me and my friend Ashley Rowe, um, and that's the Arc de Triomphe. And this is also in Paris, and um, our hotel was just around the corner, so every single morning we woke up and we saw this beautiful um, thing, and it just reminded us um, how beautiful France was, and the history behind it um, is that this was built. Um, um, Napoleon wanted this built for his soldiers to walk through it, um, um, celebrating their victory over the battle they had just won. So um, that was amazing to wake up to this every single morning. Um, and then in the last picture is, of course, Notre Dame. And we were absolutely blessed to be there approximately around a month before um, the fire happened. And we actually saw it twice. The first time we walked past it and we had lunch nearby. But we couldn't see it, but we could hear the bells. And that was just amazing um, to hear the bells. and. I, that was, I will always remember that. Um, and the second time, we actually went inside and we walked through the church. And I remember um, feeling it was just so peaceful and it was beautiful. Everyone was so respectful. Um, and yeah, we walked through. And the very, very, very back, they have all these cool relics there at the church. And my favorite part of um, the trip was seeing the crown of thorns at the very back. And um, yeah, so thank you for listening to us and giving us this amazing opportunity to go over to um, Spain and France. Um, it has encouraged me to possibly study abroad in my future and expand my Spanish, so thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, good evening, I'm Mario Dewey. I'm currently in Spanish IV2 at Was East. Um, and if we go to our first picture here, um, this was a picture of me. This is the Eiffel Tower at night. Um, and as you can see, it's lit up, and they do do a light show. And like um, on the hour, they do a five-minute kind of sparkle thing. <coughs> and that's really cool. And um, in this picture, um, I took this when we were on the boat on the Seine River in Paris. Um, on this boat, we traveled a long ways and went under all the famous bridges, and that was really cool. And got to see everything from um, the river standpoint. And then also later on the trip, we did go up into the Eiffel Tower. Um, there's three floors on there, so we got to go up the elevator, go all the way to the top, see the entire city of Paris. Um, that was super cool. See all the lights and all the buildings that we were previously in. And then um, as we go to the second picture, um, now we're in Spain. Um, this is a meal that we had, and these are called tapas. So much like we um, would go from bar to bar for a drink, they go from restaurant to restaurant and order these little hors d'oeuvres. Um, so then I, I tried a lot of those uh, when I was in Spain. Um, and then as we go to the third picture, um, this is downtown Madrid. Um, we spent a lot of our time in Paris um, touring the, um, the buildings, the museums, the architecture. And then in Madrid, um, after we toured the buildings in Madrid and the Toledo and Segovia, um, we got some time to roam around um, in Madrid. And we got to see some cool markets and um, experience the culture like firsthand. Um, just go in some like authentic shops and just use our Spanish. Before I went on this trip, I never really used Spanish like in the real world, just in class at school. Um, and then after traveling to Paris and Madrid, uh, it's kind of cool how much I'm capable of actually speaking and communicating with 
um, the locals there. So I thought that was super cool. And like Lily Grace said, I'm definitely probably going to travel abroad to Madrid in college. Mm -hmm. I look forward to that. I do. Oh, yeah. Um, hello, my name is Ben Reif, and I'd like to first start out saying, adding on to what Lily Gray said, a lot of this stuff uh, that we saw on the trip we learned in the classroom, primarily in Spanish 3-4, that is the Spanish class that I'm in, in History IB, I'm in with Lily Grace. And a lot of the things that we learned in history sometimes can get a little bland, but once that, like, when I got to see all these things, it kind of <coughs> came to life and really got me excited about what I was learning about in the classroom and what I was seeing firsthand. Now, the first four pictures on the top there were my favorite part of the trip, and that was the food. <laughs> um, we had churros with Dr. Klein going in on the churros right there. And then the picture to the right is a seafood paella, and that was the last meal we had on the trip, which was one of my favorites, very delicious. And then the third picture, there are two tapas, one of them is uh, croquetas, which is kind of a fried potato with, ha with potato with ham inside of it. And then I think the other one is mozzarella cheese with some balsamic on it, which is also very really good. And then there's Mario in the picture on the right with a variety of tapas. Uh, the food was very delicious on this trip. I always will remember, will remember that. <laughs> and then uh, once you get to the bottom left, there's me in front of the Plaza de Toros. And that is the uh, second biggest bull ring in Spain. And bullfighting is still one of the most popular sports in Spain behind soccer. And it's really just a traditional thing that everybody gets really excited about there. The second biggest one in the world is in Spain. It's in Barcelona. And the first largest is in Mexico City. Mm. And then the middle picture is me with a sword. And that was in Toledo, and that is one of the most famous sword factories in the world, is in Toledo. And to the right, that is the city of Toledo. It is surrounded by a river, which was acted as a moat against, so over 800 year span, it was fought over by uh, Muslims, Jews, and Christians. And the tactic to get into the city, to fight for the city, was not just to go in and start battling, it was actually to siege it, because it was so hard to Enter. Mm -hmm. So overall, this trip, I learned a lot of new things, and I'm very glad that I got the opportunity to go on it. Thank you. Before we sign off, just put you on the spot, Dr. Klein. Do you have anything you want to add from a parent perspective? Sure. So I'm Pat Klein. Um, the best thing about the trip was actually hanging with the kids because, um, you know, you kind of see them around and whatever, um, but they're kind of out of the element of school and certainly for my daughter, um, you know, to see how she interacted with the, the other kids, but in this kind of cool setting of some other world. And so I would just say, um, I don't know if there's parents here or not, do it. It was probably one of the best things I ever did, um, really to be with my daughter on the trip and get to know some of these kids here who, and Lily Grace didn't say it, but we noticed about three paintings over there from the 1500s that look exactly like her. So we were just kind of wondering about that. <laughs> Reincarnation, never next. And I gave Ben a talk about where his name came from on the 12 tribes of Israel, right Ben? And like right after that we went to the museum and there it was, right? Mm -hmm. The 12 tribes and the whole thing, and, and hopefully that connected. Mm -hmm. And Mario, you know, he has a good name. He's ranked 51st in the state of Tennessee. But, so anyway, I would just say it's, it was just a wonderful experience to be with the kids, and, and the trip itself was awesome, too. So thanks for providing that opportunity for, for everyone, really. So thank you. Thank you. Before we go, I just wanted to mention our um, future travel abroad happening mm -hmm. at Wausau East. Um, this August, Ramona Winterly, German teacher, will be taking students to Germany for two weeks. They will um, stay with local families and attend school while there. Next spring break in March 2020, Jody Craig, Spanish teacher, she will be taking students to Peru. 
And um, she wanted me to mention some of the highlights that will happen on that trip are the Andes Mountains, seeing the Amazon, visiting Machu Picchu, and the capital of the Incan Empire. And then come 2021, it'll be mine and Janelle's turn to once again um, travel myself to France and Janelle to a yet to be determined Spanish speaking destination. Mm -hmm. So again, thank you so much for having us. Merci beaucoup for your presentation. It was very interesting. Sorry, I don't speak Spanish. Um, just on a personal note to the students that were sort of debating about studying abroad, um, just from a personal experience, I studied abroad both as an undergrad and in law school, and I so strongly encourage that for anybody who's considering it. You will not regret it. All right. Um, moving on, uh, let's move on to public and student comment for items appearing on the agenda. Um, just a note, we've had a bit of disorder, it might seem, in this meeting because uh, we were trying to be efficient and then it ended up that we had to switch a number of items around. But um, these two are intentionally listed one after another. It used to be that public comment for, for items not appearing on the agenda was very much towards the end of the meeting, but in an effort to um, promote more public participation as well as um, respect the public's time, we are moving that up early in the meeting. So going forward, it will be that we have public comment regardless of it, if the um, item is on the agenda or is not on the agenda, will be early in the meeting. Okay, so we don't have any public comment for matters that appear on the agenda. We do have two for matters not appearing on the agenda. Um, the first is Harlan Harris. Um, so if you want to come forward, you're permitted five minutes to speak. I have letters as well as a packet of information. If you want each take one, you can follow along as I read. And um, Ms. Harris, uh, Cassie Peck will be holding up time for you to see as you speak, because it is a strict five minutes. Yes. And um, if you'll state your name and address, please. And then where I live or where I work. Um, your your physical address where you where you reside. Okay. So Carlin Harris, two two five zero three one off road Ringgold. Um, mm -hmm. Five four four seven one. Sorry. Okay. Can I begin? I request your attention because the children of Wassa area need to be a priority. Sending students to a school that isn't fulfilling basic needs is an unfair treatment and violates the district mission statement. The purpose of this letter is to bring attention to several observations in regards to the needs at EEA Learning Academy. These observations are a concern as they greatly hinder the positive experience for all who walk through EEA. Without specific order, those concerns are as follows. The importance of a full-time principal, the necessity of a full-time counselor, in addition to a full-time social worker, and staff that is professionally trained in behavior management, as well as traditional classroom teaching. First, I'll address the issue with having a less than half-time principal present. The most important role of a principal is to provide strategic direction for the school. With this direction, they must manage operations of their school, which leads to evaluating staff and student progress, revising policies and procedures when necessary, and physically being present in the school. The principal must be someone who is highly regarded and well-respected, always being diplomatic in their decision-making. Their role is to ensure a proficient and safe environment for all, while focusing on their students' basic and academic needs. With a position that is only 0.3 and the person in position is not at school daily, it is impossible to focus on the administrative roles and be a trustworthy leader. Continuing with the part-time position concerns, I'll address the fact that the principal of EEA is also the 0.7 counselor. First off, an administrative role and a counseling role are completely different and therefore require a variety of skills. Due to the immediate need for administrative duties, the counseling piece is neglected. 
The current principal has phenomenal ability with students one-on-one, -on -one, but unfortunately isn't able to fulfill her passion because she must be principal first. This leaves all the students without the mental and emotional support they require. Yes, counseling interns and now a .3 social worker are available at school. But the constant rotation and time restrictions of those people makes the trust building piece between staff and student truant. Relationship building is the mission of EEA. This cannot be fulfilled when the two greatest positions are shared by one person and then partial counseling responsibility is given to interns who are present for only a few months before leaving. A child with traumatic history, behavioral struggles, social stigmas, and learning disabilities will not thrive without a steady confidant. Last, the presence of AmeriCorps members benefits the member much more than the student body. Again, this goes back to the constant rotation of people that the students are forced to build trust with. Even more so, the lack of training and knowledge of most AmeriCorps members demands the increased attention from the principal and any other staff willing to train that member. Unfortunately, there isn't any specific training provided. Therefore, the AmeriCorps worker is expected to adapt quickly and figure out their role with their own tools. Also, because AmeriCorps members aren't certified staff members, substitutes are not called in their absence. <clears throat> leaving the staff short when needs from students are consistently high. The basic requirement of a staff member working in a school environment with at-risk youth is behavior management and leadership, <coughs> two qualifications which are not common knowledge. The school's title, Enrich, Excel, Achieve, Learning Academy, alludes to what this charter school is supposed to accomplish. Based on the 55.8 score assessed on the school report card dated November 2018, EEA is not meeting expectations. Thank you for your sincere attention to the matters delineated above, and the packets that I passed out is data proving that EEA is failing. <coughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next we have Kara Torkelson. My name is Kara Torkelson and I live at 5007 Bleeding Heart Street and I have been teaching French in the Wassa School District for 25 years. I'm here tonight to talk about the French program. Sometimes I feel like I need to be my own cheerleader every year sometimes. Um, and in March of last year, the French program at Wassa West High School was recognized by AATF the American Association of Teachers of French as one of the outstanding programs of French, not just in the state of Wisconsin, but nationally, and these are the reasons why. The French program at West continues to offer several opportunities for students to become active, uh, active promoting the language and culture. Students can participate in French club, where they visit various elementary schools and offer an, offer an after school enrichment experience. They can participate in Concours Oral, which is the French Forensics, Grand Concours, um, Grand Concours, the National French Test, and the Na French National Honor Society, which I started a chapter two years ago. Just this past Saturday, nine students attended the State Concours Oral in Lake Mills, Wisconsin, where they not were not only did they compete and receive gold and sil silver medals for their talents, but they also were able to raise three hundred dollars for the French Club by selling a cut. Uh, this fall, for the first time, French, um, French 5 students at Wasa West will be able to enroll for dual credit with the University of Wisconsin Green Bay, and they can earn up to 18 retro credits without even taking the AP or placement test. Uh, the GX certificate, the Global Education Achievement Certificate, has also been awarded to three French students since its implementation three years ago. This year was also a year of more collaboration with the French students and teachers at Wassa East, Horace Mann, and John Muir. It was a pleasure to work with Elizabeth and Heather Janssen. Elizabeth is a new teacher at East, she was just here, to the district who inspires her students to celebrate the French language and culture with French conversation groups on Saturdays and is e e eager to take on new challenges no matter how difficult they may be. Heather Janssen was also able to encourage her students to participate in the Concours Hall for the first time this year by working together 
we, we were able to take 50 parents and students to the Melting Pot restaurant in Appleton in December, which we hope will be an annual event. It's these extra opportunities that keep the French program strong and rich. I'm also here tonight to thank the board for your support for foreign travel. I've been the lead teacher for uh, 10 student tours and family stays in France. These trips are life changing, as you can see. Um, I currently know three former students who have traveled with me who have gone on to be French teachers. Right now I know one student who is living in Africa using her French, another one in New York, and another one in Canada using their French on a daily basis. The next trip planned for Wasa West is for June of 2020, and without the board's support, um, this amazing and essential experience would not be possible. So thank you. The ongoing issue for students' enrollments for the French level ones in the upper level classes, they still do struggle. For example, 10 students at Wasa West enrolled in French one for next year. Um, we had to cancel the class instead of combining it. Um, but we're always gonna struggle with, with the upper levels. So parents, I, I still have a concern with parents at the middle levels I think are still misled that if their child does not take a language at John Muir Horseman, that their child's first choice of language study will will be provided and this is not the case. Last year I proposed offering a level one summer intensive course and as of today I've not heard of any updates on the progress of offering such a class but I still would really like to look at that. I encourage the board to continue to look at efforts to study and to critique and improve the language programs in the Wasa School District. Knowing another language and studying other cultures is essential to raising global and responsible citizens. Thank you for your continued efforts and support of foreign language study and opportunities for students in the Wasa School District. Merci beaucoup, madame. All right, we're moving to committee update and board referrals. There is um, a small change, fellow board members, on the agenda in that it used to just say committee slash board referrals, but um, it now says committee update for clarity. Um, it doesn't seem to have gotten a whole lot of updates in the past. So, um, are there any committee updates? There's just the human growth and development continues to meet, and I don't know when the end will be in sight, but. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Can I comment? Mm -hmm. uh, the Human Growth and Development Committee uh, has met. Uh, Tom has been very gracious in organizing that committee, but I have some sincere questions as to whether it's really following closely to the state mandate and state ta state statute in terms of uh, the appointments and the number of parents involved. Do you have any comments on the, the committee? I'm actually not really sure of the makeup of the committee. I know that there is one board member, but as far as as of, as of today, there are three new parents, um, an additional member of the clergy, so we now have two members of the clergy. Uh, we have two members, uh, professional health, health, health care uh, persons, and uh, we have teachers from East, West, Man and Muir, because they all needed to be. We did have one of our teachers from Wausau <coughs> West uh, decide after last meeting to uh, to leave the committee, um, but we're going to continue meeting. Okay, I'm aware that there's a an upcoming meeting in May. Is this something that meets monthly then? Uh, actually, right now we're meeting weekly almost. Uh, we're meeting this coming Thursday. Okay. It we're meeting from 5:30 to 7. Uh, at the end of each meeting, we try and set the next meeting for when people are able to, to get there. Coming up, we're going to have to work around graduations and everything else that will take place here. Okay, I appreciate um, explaining that a bit more because the board appointment for this uh, particular committee is on the agenda in June. So it would be helpful to board members to have a little bit more understanding of time commitments and, and things of that nature. Okay, any um, board referrals? Um, I believe that's everything. With that, yeah, I apologize for the uh, 
change in order, but with that, seeking a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.